Everybody just give a big round of applause to Mr. Bivens for allowing us to use his room on the line. Alright, so how's that Chick-fil-A tasting? Good. That was weak. Good. 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 Would you guys have that in and out or? It was okay, come on. Alright, let's get this going. Alright, so this is a song that I wrote before I get into speaking. I just want to um, put this together for you guys. I don't have so much time, so I'm just going to play the first verse. Then I'm going to speak and then you'll see what happens at the end. That's the gospel, baby. the whole song, but I'm just going to give you a little preview for now, because we're uh, short on time. Um, but there's going to be a concert this summer that I'm going to be having. It's going to be a release concert at Beach Point Church. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Woo! So it's going to be a release concert. We're actually raising money because the Lord has called us to plant a new church in Huntington. So now we have Beach Point Church in Huntington Beach. Um, that I am a member of and that I'm going to be serving at. So if you guys want to come to that, you'll get the whole version. You'll be able to help support $10 entrance, and it is going to be to raise money for our new church. We meet up at Fusion in Huntington on Golden West, in between Golden West and Gothard on Edinger. All right. Man, this is crazy because I used to come to this school. Actually, this used to be a teacher's classroom that I was in. Um, I can't remember his name, Mr. Oldsberg, or no, no. I can't remember whose classroom I was in, but basically I got kicked out because I was a, I was a troublemaker. And um, the last time I went to this school, I graduated in 2008. So does anybody does anybody remember having the bell? That's right. No one remembers it because the last time I had the bell was when me and Daniel Query were here. We were freshmen in high school, and that was the last time we had the bell. So I need anybody in here. Does anybody play football? All right, football players, go grab that bell back next year. Where's the wrestlers? At? Where wrestlers, wrestlers. Hey, CIF champion. That's what I'm talking there you about. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Go wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. So, um, it's crazy. Uh, how many of us? How many of us in this room? Say, are we, a majority of us are athletes, right? This is first 
Uh, this is the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, so I'm guessing a majority of the people in here are athletes, correct? Yeah. Alright, so how many people use the excuse that you don't party, or you don't do drugs, or you don't drink, or you don't have sex, or do anything, and get into that life because you want to focus on sports? Does anybody use that excuse? No? Okay. Well, that's what I did. That's what I used. When I was a freshman, when I came into the school, when I was at Found Valley, I hung out with a lot of my friends who were partiers. And I was around them, they were drinking 40s, they were smoking weed, they were having sex, they were doing things that I knew I didn't want to be a part of, and I knew I didn't want to give, give myself to. But my excuse was that it was because I played sports, and that was what got me away. But what I was doing was tempting myself and walking to um, the line of temptation. I was walking and flirting with uh, temptation and desires that I didn't even know that I had. But what was happening was the enemy, some of you call him Satan, uh, was tempting me and luring me into that life. I went to, I went to church when I was a small boy, and uh, my family walked away, and uh, my family got crazy and messy, and, and um, we ended up stopping going to church. So my refuge became sports, and that's what kept me away. And that was my excuse. I said, no, nah, man, my homies were like, hey, sip this 40, hey, hit this blunt, hey, do this, do this. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm straight, man. I play football. I go to Found Valley, I play football. I'm about to win the belt. So that's my excuse. But what happened to me was I... Uh, as, I, as I started flirting with that line and as I started to enter into that temptation, entering into that realm thinking that I was strong enough to withstand the temptation of what was going on, as I was doing that, I was becoming weaker and weaker and weaker and I was uh, making poor decisions, I was getting into fights, I was hanging out with friends who really didn't care about me and um, so one day um, somebody was trying to mess with my sister and my, I had a little sister that, that went to the school, she was a freshman, I was a junior in high school and uh, Normally, um, a lot of times what happens when an older brother finds out that a senior is trying to get with his freshman sister, they get pissed off. So I got pissed off and I beat him up. And when I beat him up, I got kicked off the football team. I got kicked off the football team and so I said, all right, you know what, forget football, I'm gonna go play basketball then. So I, I had already quit basketball to play football and I was like, I'm just gonna go back and play basketball. I'm gonna go do that. So I went and sure enough, I wasn't eligible to play basketball because my grades were piss poor. They were horrible, and I wasn't allowed to play on the basketball team. So as a big, tough senior, I was in the supervision office. I was in my guidance counselor's office crying because I couldn't play basketball, and I couldn't play football. I tried out for the baseball team. I made the third cut, but the coach said, hey, we already got our team together, man. It's, it's, I'm sorry. You, you just can't make the team. So I was upset. I couldn't play anything. My senior year in high school, I had been growing up playing sports from the time I was two years old and now as a senior in high school the cool how many of us wait till senior year to be the best at football best at basketball the best on the wrestling team that's when you're the most dominant and that year I couldn't play sports so what happened to me I said all right I'm just gonna go kick with my friends who I thought were my friends and those same friends that I was with that I was hanging out with now I didn't have an excuse now they wanted me to do all this stuff and hang out and, and, uh, and give into this world, these worldly things. And my excuse was that I played sports and that I wanted to win the belt and I wanted to be the starting point guard in the varsity basketball team. I'm a little short, so that was a big dream, but hey. <laughs> I didn't have that excuse anymore. So what happened? I said, all right, you know what, screw it. Started fiddling with all that stuff because it was right there. And for years, the enemy was enticing me he was enticing me and showing me these things that might have looked good and glamorous, um, but once you give into them, they leave you feeling empty, empty and alone. And I know some of us in this room have already experienced that. I experienced that so heavily because I just wanted something and wanted something. And so I started doing drugs and I started then selling drugs and I started drinking and I started partying and girls and everything. And what was happening to me was that the more and more I tried to feed my lusts, the hungrier I got. And nothing satisfied me, nothing. Nothing that I tried to do satisfied me. So it left me, it left me alone and in a dark place. And um, as I'm praying, the Lord, the Lord was giving, giving me this verse um, just actually a week or so ago, two weeks ago, when I was just praying for you guys and, and just uh, asking God what he wanted me to share. And the Lord gave me this powerful verse that I had read before many times, but all of a sudden, now it was clicking in my head and it was so clear and I'm like, God, why didn't I know this as a 14 year old? Why didn't I know this as a, oh yeah, that's because I, I, didn't have, I didn't have any guidance. I didn't have anybody speaking into my life. I didn't have a church to go to um, because I was, I was lost. I was lost. 
And so God gave me this verse. It's 2 Timothy 2.22. It's uh, one of my favorite verses because as a 26-year-old man, I still deal with this stuff. And so I have to hide in the word of God. I have to hide in community with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I have to hide in the Lord's presence. And that's how I'm able to withstand temptation. So 2 Timothy 2.22 says, Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of pure heart. So what Paul is telling Timothy to tell the church to flee from the desires. It's not saying, oh, let's see how close I can get without sinning and stay there. No, 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 it's saying flee away from it and hang out with people that are pursuing that as well. Hang out and surround yourself with the people that are calling on the Lord with pure heart and pursuing the Lord with pure heart. So you see your friends and it's like, hey, just because your friend might not be a Christian or not, might not believe in God, that doesn't mean you hate them or, or you cast them out, you love them. But are you going to want to hang out with them every weekend while they're hanging out and partying and doing things that they're not supposed to be doing? you got to love them. you got to pray for them. And you got to say, hey, I really want to hang out with you, but I just don't want to surround myself with that. Because what's going to happen, as strong as you think you are, the enemy is just shaving and shaving and shaving away until one day you're at a very, very weak spot and the enemy attacks. The devil doesn't just show up randomly and says, bah! No. <laughs> he's waiting around the corner. He's he's seeing your movements. He's seeing where you hang out. He's seeing who you're hanging out with. He's seeing what you're doing, and he's waiting. And he's slowly shifting, slowly shifting, slowly shifting till you get to a weak, weak spot. He know he's gonna find out your weakest spot. And right when you hit that, boom! He smacks you in the face, and you fall, and you hit rock bottom. It took me rock bottom to bounce up. And that's what I said there. Sometimes you need to fall to start. I had to fall and hit rock bottom in order to find God because I wasn't fleeing from temptation. And so I wrote this, I wrote this, uh, I wrote this that I want to share with you guys. Um, okay, so this is something that I struggle with. So I'm not, I'm not looking at you guys and saying, hey, I'm perfect and this is what you guys got to do. That's not me. I'm telling you guys, I'm weak. I am preaching from my weakness. I'm a man of God, but I, but I sin. I sin. And and you can never say, I will never sin. But you can say that you will not let sin trap you and lock you in. You confess with your community. You confess with your pastors. You confess to your parents. And you don't let that trap you in. So this is what I wrote. I said, it's not about trying to get as close to sin as possible without sinning and testing our self-control. It's about running in the opposite direction and not putting yourself in a position to compromise your faith or allow the enemy any room to play. Knowing yourself enough to humbly admit that you need to withstand temptation by not being around it. Admitting weakness is the truest of strengths. So for me, I'll share one thing that I have to flee from and that's drinking. Can I have a beer? Yeah. Is that a sin? I'm 26 years old. I could buy a beer anywhere that sells beer. That's not a sin. It's, it's of the law, it's legal. But now I look and I say, okay, I, I check my heart and I check my relationship with God. And I know that if I have a beer, it's, that's not fleeing from temptation. That's getting to the line. Yeah, I'm not sinning, but it's creeping up to the line. There's one beer and then I'm like, man, I'll just have two. It's all good. I'm at dinner. I'm eating. So, all right. Then I creep closer. And all of a sudden my mind starts to, okay, well, why don't I just, huh? And all of a sudden I'm creeping and creeping and trying to get too close to that edge without actually sitting, sinning or, or just being destructive to myself. And what happens is then the enemy attacks. So what I do is I say, okay, here's a beer. That's fine. I'll go out with one of my best friends and have dinner. And if his relationship with God is, and that's okay with him and that's, and he's good with that, he has a beer. That's fine. Good. Praise God. You can have a beer. I can't. So I have to flee from that and run away. I can't even have one. And that's my own relationship. So what you all have to do is pray to God and say, God, what is fleeing from me? What does that look like for me? Oh, maybe that's Snapchat. Maybe I need to delete my Snapchat or deactivate my Snapchat. Because what happens with Snapchat is all of a sudden you snap a boy or you snap a girl. And then one thing leads to another, one thing leads to another. And you're getting yourself in trouble. I just deactivated my Snapchat last week because... Nothing fruitful comes from it. Um, and so you have to ask yourself, is Snapchat, is that, is that something that is, is causing me to get closer and closer to sin? Or should I just delete it and flee from it? You guys have to pray. You guys have to ask God what that looks like for you in your life and in your relationship. So I'm going to get that into the next song, okay?
This song is called God's Got It. Because I, I know that we struggle, and I know that with all the stuff that I'm saying, it gets hard. But when we rely on the Lord and allow him to get us through, then that's how we get through it. I wanna leave rap and it kills, but I ain't signed to 